that, you know, anthropomorphic dragon. Yeah, so it's like dragon going up against a lizard. Their ancestral tree connects. There's some DNA shared there for sure. A dragon without legs is a, a dragon with legs is a lizard. That's what Detna is. Okay. Thank you for that piece of information. I enjoyed that. Laura side. Thank you very much. I don't know. I think I'd pick the dragon in a fight against a lizard. How about True. you? Uh, I think so too. Yeah. The lizard doesn't really I'm seem. Shall. We shall. We're gonna jump back into the game here. Thanks for being patient with us, everybody. We wanted to make sure, of course, that it's match point, that everything is settled in a situation. Once again, here at the desk, it's me, Naisu, joined with Mirko. It's match point for Smart Omega Empress, possibly making history with this game if they can go ahead and topple the Queens of MLBB. But for Team Vitality, I gotta say, I like the lineup they brought for this game. Same. This is a good composition that can cover a lot of the basis of the game from early all the way to the late game here. There's a little give and take though as we get into the game. I definitely want to put my, uh, or put all of you, the viewers, attention towards Shinoa. Because she's actually going to go with a Brave Smite instead of the normal Quantum Charge that we have seen most recently. This is, you know, Quantum Charge is definitely the favorite, right? Yeah. Back in the day, yes, it was a Brave Smite. You could go for that very cringe. Tanky build too on the carry. That you know what we, should, we won't mention it even. <laughs> but here, it's gonna be kind of tough. It's great to survive in lane against the Brody, but in the skirmishes, especially when you're getting chased down by the Uzong, the addition additional movement speed that you usually get with the Quantum Charge usually lets you evade from a lot of the dive. Now, not so much, right? So she's gonna have to rely on her Purify, on her dashes even more. Yeah, it's it's mainly just so that you can go ahead and withstand the pressure that's going to be here from this lineup especially from team vitality the fact that they have a louis yi you know with the diversion plays you kind of have to always have your head on a swivel you always have to be looking around you especially for shinoa and she's already showed that she can do this i mean she is the only one that's gotten a savage here throughout mwi so we'll see if she can actually continue to play the way she has been up to this point and so as we mentioned that turtle's going to be up here it looks like she's going to be started up with Smart Omega Empress, I'm not sure if Team Vitality can really do anything about it. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. Nope. Keshi gets the turtle. Vivian will be able to escape. Diversion coming down. Amori is going to be caught there. Goes with the Primal Wrap. Able to take it and gets out. Well played to Amori. Doesn't even have to burn the Purify. Yeah, that's the... Honestly, this is like the, you know, the power that you can use with a Valentina. You always get a choice to take a couple of these ultimates that are going to help you in certain situations, and this time it was that oh. Primal Wrath. Look at this on the bottom side. Shell gets the information. Not sure, though. The rest of the team making their way through. This could be a response from them, but I think right now she's just going to be on the defensive. And so that's the thing. You know, even for the Brody pick, man, like we haven't seen Brody too much. I know we saw him debut today and then actually do all right. But in this matchup, you know, when you're trying to play from a distance because you're trying to avoid getting set up upon, I mean, there's a Barris across from you. You already know the Hayabusa is going to be putting the pressure there. Is, is this a good pick for the gold lane? Is this good to get them another game under their belt here to extend the series? I think it's going to be good if they play around their power spikes. But obviously for Smart Omega Empress, they can actually just play to avoid the power spike. In the mid game is where Vitality will have most of the power, most of the advantage. Yeah. So as long as Smart Omega Empress don't go for a lot of these crazy fights early on, the fact that they've already gotten a neutral objective without contest is already really good, by the way. So Vitality really need to push on the pace here, and you can already see the rotation in the bottom side of the map. That's exactly what they're going for. Chell, Skypiercer for first item, Vivian. Two-man Earth Shatter into the Onward, now dealing some damage. Keishi in the back line, Sydney gonna be assassinated. Chell with a good stun over to Keishi, torn apart memory used up. Keishi very low. Vivian, Primal Wrap, Vivol. Not gonna go for the Lycan form just yet, but because of that aggressive maneuver, I'll have to say, despite the kill, no, Smart Omega Empress got so much more value on top of the kill because not a Yanami, two levels ahead, gets half of the turret shield up top. Yeah, good for her and, and good start here already for Smart Omega Empress. And this is what I was talking about. You know, the pressure coming out from a Hayabusa pick is always going to be there. She's also running the War Cry Emblem, and it's very easy to proc that, get that extra percentage of damage already on. And so for Team Vitality, you know, they're going to have to kind of be wary of the back line, especially on how they find these placements with a diversion. Turtles up here, second one of the game. It's going to be Team Vitality that starts it up. We'll see if Smart Omega Empress wants to do anything about it. Black Dragon form used up the Earth Shadow earlier, not the enemy. How's the oh, oh, oh. with a steal with a quad shadow? And then they get out smooth. 
Smooth criminal. Like a ninja here. Keshi time and time again. Man, has she stepped up throughout the entirety of MWI. Picks up the Sky Piercer now, too. So her threat level, it just rose a notch. Maybe two. Because now you have a Sky Piercer and you have some pretty squishy, you know, members that you can target down if you're from Team Vitality. So she's going to play around that. That's a flicker into the Dentist. Welcome, Casey. Oh. Comes in with a quad shadow and the shadow kill for me. Echo can only <laughs> just dive in. What an amazing setup up top. Mirai going to be taken. Off the land, Don. Vitality really looking for a trade at this point of the game. Shinoa going in, doing some damage. Vivil taking up a few shots for Chell. Deals as much damage as possible, but even then, they can't go for the turret. Oof. It's gonna be delayed a bit, and then Smart Omega Empress again will utilize that timing to go to mid lane. Amore, very aggressive. Uh -oh. Keishi as well, doesn't have the Shadow Kill just yet. With a Purify used up, they go for the turret, they take it down. Vivian forced to use a Primal Wrath. 2,000 gold ahead, Smart Omega Empress. The macro plays right now. The timing, the rotations from the Empresses is just on point. It's been perfect throughout the series, even from their last series. It, it's, it, it doesn't seem like there's a weak point for them right now. They have to find something for Team Vitality here. Taking a look at the items real quick, too. You're going to have some of the first items locked in now. That is the Enchanted Talisman locked in. Diversion going to be used, but no follow-up through that portal. Also, too, you have a Sky Piercer on Shell, right? She picked it up early on, but so far she's got the kill. She's farming up the best she can here. She is slightly ahead of Shinoa, but again, you have to point the, the fact that Shinoa, she's been on the defense, and I think that's also why she went with the Brave Smite, because she knew that she would have to play like this. But now, top side. I'm offended, locking her down. Good or shattered on the Fierce Dive defensively. Mirai gonna be caught under the turret. Sinny picks up the kill, back even on the board. But in terms of gold, in terms of macro, so heavily in favor of the Empresses. We're gonna go on a turtle, third one, this time for free. Diversion into the mid bush. Oh, the Black Dragon it. form, they wanna go for the fight. Flicker forward into the stun and the Petrify, Vivian picks up the kill. That's a trade back for the turtle. Okay, Team Vitality finding wins where they can. Yes, they've given up all three turtles, but they found a couple key kills. Could they get another? Flicker gonna be used. Still alive for now, so for Team Vitality, managing to now get some space to work with across the map, they get the tier one down, it's gonna be traded up top as Smart Omega Empress gets the top turret. So this is out at the point of the game. Before that first Lord comes up, what do you have to make? You have to be able to match the macro level of play that Smart Omega Empress has done. And part of the good thing is, hey, we have a Lu Yi, use that advantage of the diversion to help you do that. Malefic Roar being picked up as well for Vivil. So some of these key items are also being locked in because of the way that Team Vitality has been playing. We'll see if once again, both teams get situated. Oh, three man, I'm offended. Is it a damage? Good Terrify on a defensive uh -oh. your side. Vivian gonna be caught and sold us from Yeko. A double for Shinoa. A disengage for Vitality. 50 seconds on the Lords. Mortal Mega Empress wanna go for the mid lane. That's a tier two. Chell and Sinny, very vulnerable. Ayanami doesn't have that's in his welcome, but Smart Omega Empress just pick up that turret. Good punishes on the board. Man, every every time there is a ruby across from you, that is probably one of the most deadliest bushes that you can wait in. Because you saw it. A multiple member, I'm offended, pull in that they collapse on. And that, that can happen time and time again. Every time Murray has her ultimate available, they're gonna look for plays like that. And her game sense, her game knowledge is so good that she knows where to find those setups at. So still, a push, a try for Team Vitality. The Lord's coming up here in five seconds. The gold, gold lead, still a little bit of a favor. Of course, we're trying to get her. The defensive line is ready in armor now, locked in for Vivian. She's gonna be the one to take the front of the damage. Take the front of it here. Conceal gonna be used though. There goes Vivian. Time of Hunter getting used off Vivian with the Primal Wrath forced out. Now the Shadow Kill into the back. Chell's gonna be taking a whole lot of that damage from the Echo with the. Oh, 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 oh. Noah Gets a fade away onto Vivian as she flickers out. The window slowly but surely closing for Team Vitality. They retaliate. As a black dragon form, Death to the Welcome connecting on the city, but she is able to purify out Vivil now, jumping on the Moray, who steals out the primal rat for me echo, still with a passive oh. caught caught in the I'm offended shell. Using the torn apart memory is not gonna be enough, Sydney! Now stopped down to the ground by Nat Ayanami, and that's another 
for a kill. Nimbal caught all alone, chasing her down, but will not be able to take her out. Not just yet. Shinoa onto the tier two. She goes instead of the Lord. And still, they can go for the Lord anytime they want. They decide now is the time. Ooh, I thought she would get that turret too. She was like one hit away, but you know what? Go for the Lord here. The Empresses are going for the kill. What an amazing two minutes for them as that unfolded. And a good try from Team Vitality to go in, won the diversion, but unfortunately, their team fighting this whole series has not been on point. It seems disgruntled or disjointed when they approach these team fights, and the targeting is just not there. And Smart Omega Empress knows this, and they've been playing up to that tune. Now with the Lord in their favor, going down the middle. Could this possibly be the push? Have they gotten themselves this much of a lead to end the game before the 12-minute mark? Shields are going to pop your Lord now in the mid lane. Team Vitality's got to deal with it. Looks like they're going to be able to clear it up pretty easily here. With Lord down there as well, Vivian. Walks up forward. Okay, she has the quad shadow on Chell. She can decide to go for it, but Chinoa is a bit too low. Vivian pops in a conceal. Now the Magic Sentry will be able to reveal all five members, but Vitality can only just watch a smart Omega Empress back away. Okay. Team Vitality still okay. They stay in the game. They hold on to the base turrets, albeit one hit away on that mid turret. But this is where, you know, they have enough time to go ahead and build up some items. Glowing one locked in from Cinny. She's only got the Enchanted Talisman after that, but also even for Vivian. You know, she doesn't have that much defense. She's working on the second item. She's got, of course, that Radiant Armor to help with that magic damage. But, you know, even to be said, they don't have an answer for Shinoa yet. Shinoa has been completely fine and untouched on this carry pick. Even half the time not needing her Purify. Blade of Despair also locked in for Keshi. So Keshi, a huge threat for Team Vitality to get over. And as long as they play against the I'm Offended being the setup potential for them, or even from not Ayanami, she's been on point with this Barretts. They should be okay, but it's all about buying more time. They managed to withstand that first push, that siege with the Lord. Can they buy more time here to get ready for the next one? I think even when we're a minute away from this Lord, unless something miraculous happens, and that has to be the diversion to be able to pull through and win that Lord fight possibly, or win the team fight. At this point, even if we're looking for ways to come back, it has to be a big mistake for Smart Omega Empress as well. Because, again, we've, if we take a look at their composition on paper, they, sh they should be able to scale very well, too, in towards the later stage of the game. Meanwhile, for Team Vitality, we see a pretty big fall off for the Brody. The Roger does pretty well, yeah. but the Lo Yi as well. That's something that will fall off in terms of damage. But in terms of, obviously, the creative chances that you can apply on the map, the pressure, the creativity there, it's still very, very good. So it really will come down to the execution. But again, the easy window for a win to snowball, it's over for Team Vitality. Now they have to dig deep. Yeah, they're going to have to dig deep. Heard the conceal being used there too, but you know, at this point, Shell did pick up a Wind of Nature, so at least she's got a little more defense here. And I think that's the struggle, you know, is getting the marks off. That's the thing about the Brody. You do have range, but you also got to get those marks off and then hope that you can cap off with the Torn Apart memory. And so far, as this Lord is up, they try to get in this positioning. The good thing, like I said, they managed to hold on to that mid turret, so they'll have to manage the wave. Not sure if they want to actually go ahead and contest fully for the Lord. They have the information. Conceal used as well. But Smart Omega Empress will take this slowly. They know they have this movement on their favor, the time on their favor. And so it looks like Team Vitality won't pull the trigger just yet. Good wave up top for Team Vitality. They're really trying to play their cards right at this point because really they cannot make any mistakes. For Smart Omega Empress, it's much more relaxed for them. It's another day. It's another game. They've gotten two already. That match point. Massive lead. Shinoa is level 14 to the Brody. And this is the timer as usually to what we see a Brody have a lead. Sydney walks up again very aggressively. Okay. Still waves being managed here. Look at the placements, of course, for Fumi. She might be part of this whole thing. If they can pull this off, if they can find a way to utilize this, but the conceal is going to be used. They force Vivian back. That might be enough for them to just give the go on the Lord. It looks like they're going to go ahead and push it. 
But as Vivian approaches back up, they don't know where the diversion is going to come through, and that's also part of the equation for Smart Omega Empress on why they take it slowly. Meanwhile, they're building more defensive items. Rose Gold Meteor now picked up for Shinoa to help with a little bit of that burst, that magic damage that can come through from Sinny, especially when the diversion follows through. But we're at a stalemate here. Amore holding on to that Edith Ultimate, the Primal Wrath, if they need it. But still, even if Smart Omega Empress does this for the next two, three minutes, it gives time for Team Vitality to catch up a little bit. There's the diversion. They're going to go. On to Vivian, Lo Yi, diversion into the back, Shinoa gonna be caught in the midst of it all right now, the Black Dragon form comes in, Vivian jumps in with Lycan form, Sini dealing damage onto Amore, with the help of Chell, for me, able to escape, Vivian goes for Lycan pounce, unable to get Shinoa, Keishi gets stunned, but is still able to get to the Quad Shadow in time. Vitality, a fighting so are smart, Omega Empress, and like you said, Nice, it's still a stalemate, but Vivian wants to go for it, it's been stolen away, oh, Ray Yagami! With the steal on Barat of all things! How? How did not Ayanami get that? It's not her! What happened? How? Let's take a look at the STC replay. She goes in. Tell me it was the missiles. Oh, what? It wasn't Who even was the it? missile. Uh, yeah. What a steal. Let's put it at that. And she's going to feel pretty good about that. And they march into the base now. Lord mid lane. Conceal gonna be used. Enhanced Lord charging down into the mid lane. Don't know Wolf King onto Pivot, but she's able to still escape Shinoa. Jumping forward. Oh. Not Ayanami. Once again with the Nexus. Welcome Vivian gonna be shredded down. Keishi in the back line with a shadow kill as well. Romie goes next to the chopping block. She goes for the Fury side. Keishi gets a double. The Lord dealt with. But there's another wave. Keishi walking up. Chell moving forward. Jumps in with a stack. But now oh. will we say with a nature? Oh. Chell with a double. Saves the game for a big Shinoa. We'll punish a bit more, picking up another base turret. Shell keeps Team Vitality, keeps their dynasty together with that one play for now. Buying themselves some more time. Smart Omega Empress so close, so near the end there, but not going to be able to get it. You take a look at the STC replay. They had it here at this moment. They go in with Daytona's welcome on the backside. Keshi goes in with a shadow kill with the Lord quickly taken care of. And no minion wave pushed in because the two turrets, top and bottom, are still up. You can see, of course, a little adjustment here for Murray. They know that at that point they could have ended it possibly. But what a defense from Team Vitality. And all this equates to getting to that point. This is the longest game that they've had in the series so far. And it buys them enough time to build up. Now you have some of these defensive items for Team Vitality. Winter's Crown there. Now for Sinny. Could be enough. Also the anti Karas now for Vivian to help with some of that damage coming through. And so at this point, they find themselves at this once again. The hard part for Team Vitality is not just waiting for the Lord and going through that whole orchestrated dance again. It's the fact that they don't have many turrets now. They can't really move around the map the way they want to unless they're going to go and take a risk and use the diversion. But it's better for them to just kind of wait for the same situation they saw earlier. The problem is now on the flip side, Smart Omega Empress starts picking up immortalities. There's two now on the board for them that they can work around with. And even the same can be said now, Vivian, there's the endless battle. So key items across the board for both teams being picked up here. Far lane control too. Naisu always going to be in control of Smart Omega Empress at this point. It was already very difficult for Vitality to handle the slow pushes being built up by Smart Omega up top. With the Lord always being in the bottom side of the map. But now with the base turret taken down there, even if they deal with it, even if they constantly clear it, it's always going to be slow pushing back to them. And again, when it comes to wave clear, it's not the composition you want. <laughs> it's a Loyi, it's a Brody. It's not the composition you want, and right now Vivian's going to give the information that they started up the Lord here. Fumi Echo getting a position. There's Diversion. It's the same setup here, just like last time. But now it's going to be a bit different. Oh! Still going to wait. Now the Lycan Pasha. No one's going to be taken down by the Execute of the Sky Piercer. Take a look at the movements now as the Evolve Lord spawns in the bottom side of the map. It's going to be a lot of members trying to look for a little bit of those plays. Keishi was onto the mid lane, but luckily the minions spawned in. Smart Omega Empress, they wanted to go for a cheeky little side split push. But now what do they do? It's an Evolved Lord. 
It's an Evolve Lord that Smart Omega Empress has to deal with, but great play this time around. Vivil gets the Retribution off, keeps Team Vitality's hopes alive for this. And Divine Glaive picked up for Sinny, so this is another power spike for them to deal with. And it's it's pretty much even, at least in economy-wise, for the team. Now, for Team Vitality, can they go ahead and get some space to work with? They got to go ahead and focus on this mid lane, but it looks like Smart Omega Empress also wants to hold down the front if they can. Can't be greedy. Can't be greedy. They're going to go for it here, putting the pressure. But I'm offended, but now with the Winter Crown there. Remember, the Evolved Lord is still in the bottom lane. They need to send members to deal with it. Tier 1 in the mid lane going to be taken down as well now as they send the members down below. Chino with the ultimate already. The Evolved Lord going to be dealt with. Doesn't seem like Vitality can utilize that Lord. Great defense by Smart Omega. Empress, it didn't even charge in the base turret. Didn't charge in. So after all of that, after that retribution from Vivil, they got what? One turret in the mid lane. And you can look at it this way. It's baby steps. Baby steps in the right direction to extend the series and not get swept here by Smart Omega Empress. Team Vitality trying to do everything they can from that base defense earlier on from Shell to that steal of the Lord from Vivil. And now Diversion going to be used into the Whoa. base, into the Missed. jungle. Sinny's still able to escape. Mirai is going to go with I'm a bit and now onto Vivian. Catching her to Terrify too. It'll bait out the Flicker. A big resource once again, but it will... Beast, Smart Omega Empress again, denying a play away with that diversion. Do you think that's, do you think that's the move, Mirko? Do you have to start to make those kind of plays for Team Vitality? Is it, is it the right move, or is it better to just wait for this Lord Tango to commence here, the third one of the game? I think it was a great move Before. earlier, right, to catch them off guard because I think even Smart Omega Empress, they were like, there's no way they take that. <laughs> but if you keep on doing that, it'll be very readable. And Smart Omega Empress, we've seen that they've been able to get the read on Team Vitality. So Vitality got to keep on throwing feints. It's a bit harder now on yeah. the to throw feints because of the cooldown that's been nerfed quite a bit. The duration now a bit longer. So many of the fainting moments with the diversion, uh, diversion no longer possible. Yeah, it's definitely harder here for them, but you know, at this point, we've seen this a couple times now. When we get into the territory of this is the fourth Lord that will be taken, you're past the 20 minute mark. You know, this, this stronger Lord is going to hurt, right? You can't even just juggle it or blitz it like you have in the past one. And so far, every single time, it's been nearly the same where they let Smart Omega Empress start it up, and then they try to come in with a diversion. And if possibly they can even get a pick off, that's going to be great for the numbers for Team Vitality. But it looks like the information comes through and still at the same time, like you mentioned earlier, they have to manage those waves with the turrets down at the top and middle. And so for Smart Omega Empress, they're going to go ahead and get in a position here. We just saw the diversion used, so it's not up on cooldown just yet. But now at this point, Team Vitality has all the defensive items that they need to really contest this. Vivian goes up front side. They're going to wait still if they can buy time. Diversion available now. And we might see a very similar setup that we saw earlier on with this Lord. We're going to have to see that. How does Smart Mega Empress tackle this? It seems Genoa, I guess this is the advantage of going for the Brave Smite, right? You don't have as much mobility, <laughs> but you can even tank up the Lord. So Evolve Lord, changes to the Lord. Nah, I'm good with the carry. Just. Just tank it up, but it's still the same. It's still the same dance. You know, this is again going back to it where we before we had all this Lord dance and everything else, but now it's just kind of this standoff. You know, I don't know, maybe the square dance or, or whatever we can call it, the tango. You have those waves pushing in, but Smart Omega Empress, they they actually don't even want to commit just yet because of what's happened in the previous Lord. And one thing you can't count them out is the fact that they could go for a split push. We've seen it happen before. Hell, we've seen teams just run it down mid, even when the team is so concerned with the Lord, this objective, because by this time, you know, 24 minutes in, this Lord could possibly be a guaranteed push into the base and a win for the game. If Team Vitality even steals it, it's already going to give them a big advantage, but this is probably the most cautious that we've seen both these teams so far throughout the series. Good read there. Just utilizing the jungle creep to open up the bush for you. Notice that it walked the other way. There was someone in that bush. She doesn't know who, but she has a pretty good idea. That's that seems. game IQ. In-game equipment, <laughs> let's take a look at this once again. Yeah, Winter Crown already built up, and 
Brody still has the boots, so Chell still wants that additional mobility that she needs in these skirmishes, but at this point, we're really just going to be waiting for some item swaps. Let's see if they go in that. Checking the bush here. Diversion could be used. Moray's going to be caught all alone with a diversion there. Great catch. Moray's still able to escape, but now immortality taken down. That's a big, big item that'll be down for quite a bit. One of the immortalities down. Now they got to deal with the big dynamite. <laughs> And even with that, they just go back to what this was, right? Setting up positions for this Lord. And for Team Vitality, that might be the play. You know, trying to catch someone off guard from Spider Mega Empress that time around. They weren't able to capitalize the kill, but they did get the flicker. They did get the immortality, which are crucial for the success of this lineup for Smart Mega Empress, especially when it comes to this fighting. So still, they don't want to actually start this up just yet because of the fact Diversion is available again. Oh, flicker in. That's an also welcome. We've all buys the immortality. Gets up with the light and form from the echo. Jumping to the back. Sydney all alone. Sydney in a 1v4. Buys the blood wings. Gets out. Oh my goodness, Vivian. Oh. Jumps with the earth shadow. Casey on the chase. Sydney gonna be taken down. Vivian, no immortality. The shadow kills to the back. Little nature there. Tell goes for the sun. But Casey wants to go for the execute. A few more hits with the light and form. Tell still able to kite away. Now Casey assassinates Vival. As Tell buys the immortality. I think they're gonna go ahead and run it down mid. They're gonna focus on the base here. There's only two left for Team Vitality. Big waves coming down. Chell gonna be targeted down. No immortality! On a conquest for their 25th! The queens of MLBB have fallen! The dynasty, the streak, the era! And to take their thrones are the empresses! No queen shall rule forever. The Empresses have made history here today in a sweep. They've dethroned the Queens of M. Emotional as well because this victory means a lot to, to Smart Mega Empress, to all the players. For sure, we're gonna take a look at their highlights from before as well. And I don't think there was a moment in all of the three games that we thought, okay, maybe Vitality have got this. It was a steamroll all throughout. They were so sharp, so on point in their execution. Shinoa, MVP for sure, but all the rest of the members, Mirai, Amor, we saw as well, like Keishi, not Ayanami. That's everyone. I mean, I mean Ayanami, but her name is not Ayanami. Yeah, like, yeah it's, it's, it's confusing, but you, you know what, what we mean. They are gone. Yeah. Philippines, Diagon. These women are all national athletes and here they carry the banner not just of Smart Omega but as well of the Philippines. We came up short in MSC but here again playing arguably maybe half the amount of tournaments that Team Vitality did over the past competitive season. They came out and they showed that heart and believing yourself and working with your team 